Okay, welcome. Uh, my name is Hermias. Today I will be talking about matching your your workload to the right database. Firstly, I want to tell you about the OTT. Online Tech Talks are a space to share knowledge with your team members. Um, and here we have some ideas. You could choose to, to share something. So feel free to contact if you are interested in sharing something. Today's agenda will be a database workload classifications, traditional approaches to scaling RDBMS, how DynamoDB works, and what database to use when. Nowadays, the common app is becoming a big data app. Uh, more types of applications that will have been okay with a relational database. Uh, now they are hitting the scale bar barrier. When you ask developers, why did you choose this database? Uh, these are the most common answers. Uh, because we heard X is the best new thing, that may be true. MongoDB, DynamoDB are really nice, but they are not suitable for every problem to solve. Some other answers could be because we have a side license for X or because X is what we know how to use. And they are really good reasons, but that, not, that won't imply that you are using the correct database for the problem you are trying to solve. So, this will be the ideal answer because this database is purpose built to support what my application is designed to do. So, for example, if you need a database that is cost efficient or performant, you have to take into account that to choose the correct database for the problem. Let's talk about types of database workloads. There are mainly two buckets those that are oper operational applications and those that are analytics applications. For operational applications, online transaction processing uh, database are the most common type of uh, database and they solve most common type of application needs. They represent common business processes that are regular and repeatable. That means that the same thing happen every time that the data is processed. For the analytics side, online analytics processing, OLAP, are BI purposes and uh, for ad hoc data projections. Typically, we don't know what the user will be asking when it's coming to the application. And for analytics, there exist two decision support systems. Decision support systems are data lakes, data warehouse, and they have long running queries and workloads against semi-structured data they answer questions for the business. The main difference between OLAP and decision support system and are, is the efficiency and the response time. So here we are seeing two main dimensions. One will be the nature of the access pattern that defines if it's operational or analytics and the efficiency in the response time. Oh, sorry. Let's talk about uh, sizing relational databases. When you size a relational database, you can have incremental chunks of capacity. That may mean that sometimes you will be wasting your money or sometimes you will be having a bad user experience. So for example, if we want to see how we scale our database, firstly, we go with a small box, then we will go with a bigger box and then we go with an even bigger box so at some point we will run out of bigger boxes and then it's where it comes a uh, no sql databases no sql databases they normalize and share to provide horizontal scale so that allows them to have near unbounded throughput and storage so this has the ability to have multiple storage nodes and allows us to put data in separated space in comparison with relational database that needs everything to be together in the same storage. 
that's the limit of scale. So now we have three dimensions. We have a um, nature of access pattern, efficiency response time, and now we have this scale dimension. So keeping with NoSQL databases, uh, let's see how they are built. They have a partition key that uniquely identifies an item, and that partition key is used for building an unordered hash indexes. Every NoSQL database has its own. In DynamoDB, DynamoDB, they are called partition key. MongoDB is called shared key. And Cassandra calls it partition key too. All NoSQL databases have this mechanism. This mechanism allows us to partition the, the space of the storage and allows us to store those partitions in different storages. So that allows the horizontal scaling. Those will be fast and consistent on any scale. So we know uh, when we use a new technology, we try to apply the same patterns we know from the old technology into the new one. So nowadays, everyone knows how to normalize data and how to use relational databases. And when NoSQL databases uh, started to emerge, we everyone tried to apply the same patterns we use in the normalized databases into the NoSQL databases. That tends as, uh, th those will be the early adopters. Mainly NoSQL databases are in the early adopters phase. And that's why uh, with the hype curve, we are in the through of the solution. So uh, mostly new technologies behave differently. Um, now, no much people know how to design NoSQL, but we expect in the near future, uh, everyone will know how to. Here we can see some of the AWS databases and analytics that they provide us uh, for the operational ones and the analytic ones. So let's keep talking about DynamoDB. DynamoDB schema consists on a table, and that table can store items. Those items can have different attributes. And those attributes uh, could be either a partition key, a sort key, or just data attributes. The partition key is mandatory. It's a key value access pattern and determines the data distribution. The sort key is optional and allows you to decide inside those partitions how items are ordered. And DynamoDB allows us to query sort keys with things like um, begins with between. So if we want to go in, in depth with a query, we could use the sort key to select certain items. So let's talk about SQL versus no SQL design pattern. If we are going to design a product database, we are going uh, with normalization in the S SQL case. So we'll have a table with products. Each product will be related with a book, albums, videos, and we will have lots of tables. If we are going with the NoSQL design, we are going with the denormalization of the data. So my products database will look like just products with all the dimensions inside. This will reduce complexity and lots of CPU load. So wrapping it up, what to use when? For SQL, uh, SQL is optimized for storage. So if you have a limit there, you have to go with SQL. So we will have normalized, relational, or dimensional data warehouse. Adopt query and aggregations. So if we need, uh, if we don't know yet how we want to access our data, SQL will be uh, what we have to use if we don't have well understood our access patterns. This will scale vertically and is great for OLAP and DSS. Then we have NoSQL uh, that's optimized for compute. They are denormalized documents, what column or key value. If you choose NoSQL, we will have to spend more time modeling and our model 
and our data need to be definable, well understood. Pre-compute aggravation will, could be called up with simple queries. And we are not gonna ask the system to compute lots of data on the way out. It's a high efficient read pattern. This will scale horizontally and it's built for OLTP or DSS at scale. And lastly, we have the graph databases. Graph databases are about relationships. They are really good for ad hoc queries against those relationships and they can pre-compute aggregations on the nodes if needed. Okay, that will be it. Um, my idea was just to throw a, a theoretical idea of how databases work. Are there any questions? Hi, uh, what about the costs? There is some, some of them is cheaper than other one. Okay, my answer would be, if you choose the correct for the problem you are, want, you are willing to solve, that will be cheaper. <laughs> if, if you try to solve a problem that's a more OLTP with a relational database, like a, a, a normal application, general applications, at some point, you will need to scale up and scale up and scale up. And as the application keeps growing, that will become really expensive. But if you if you have chosen for that application a NoSQL database and you have correctly designed your database for the access pattern you will repeatedly use, that database will scale horizontally. So if you keep getting more data, more data, more data, queries will be um, always really fast and space will always be really cheap. In the other case, if for um, an application that's, that's more uh, of, of the analytics group and OLAP, if you go with NoSQL, you will start having expensive costs when trying to do new queries. If you know your access pattern, NoSQL will be cheaper. If you do not know your access patterns, SQL will be cheaper. That will be the main answer. I don't know if, if, if it's clear. It depends. <laughs> that, that's the answer. It's clear, thanks. Awesome. Any more questions? I can share one experience if you want. Uh, yes. I use a MongoDB database with Mongoose in Node.js. Um, it's like you are really tend to create a SQL with NoSQL, right? So relational database with the NoSQL database. Um, so I don't know if you recommend, if you know, right? If you recommend to use like all, all uh, RMs when you are using NoSQL uh, in order to, you know, not commit the same problem. Nice. What I have seen, I'm not really a MongoDB user, but what I have seen about Mongoose is that it tends you to, to, to try to use as an early adopter the NoSQL, but with SQL patterns, you know, like trying to to, to introduce into NoSQL relations, and right. that's when all starts to 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 break up when when scaling, you know. And neither Mongo, neither Dynamo, neither Cassandra are ready for relations. So right. when you try to do that, you will start having in your application level the inner showings. And exactly. that will be very, very expensive. <laughs> okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, and any more questions or experience that you, you want to share? I have a question. And which will be the top five question that will let you understand which is the, the proper database for, for the the solution that you're trying to to do or the product okay um i think that they will be the three dimensions i i was mentioning the access pattern the response time and the scale if 
First, let, let's start with the access pattern. If you have your access pattern really, really defined, it, the best way will be going with NoSQL. If you don't know the access pattern yet, for example, for an MVP, it will really be uh, better to go with the relational database because you will be able, able to query everything uh, in any way. So if the client asks for an, uh, a new feature or anything, you will be able to do it without changing your database design. But when you finally have your, your final access patterns and you are sure those will be the ones for that application, you could do a migration to NoSQL that will scale, scale up horizontally uh, better. But if you don't need your application to scale that much, relational database could do too. And lastly, um, response time is very important too. Respond, re response time in NoSQL is really fast because if you have designed incorrectly your database, you will ensure one round trip for every query. If um, you are not, not that interested in the response time, relational database will make it too. Uh, you know, when relational database get data, they start shining. And when they start shining, they will take some time. Although there are there are some solutions for relational database, but when you start having more and more data, they want to scale horizontally. So they will get more expensive. Those are the three main dimensions you have to think about. And obviously, if your application is operational or an analytics application. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, another question is, what do you think about using JSON fields in, in Postgre and database that nowadays have support and it's like you're treating data like, uh, like NoSQL, right? Databases. I'm not uh, fully fully aware how that works, but I have used it and it works just fine. What I don't know if you can index something that's in JSON because if you can't index that, you will start getting problems of per performance and scaling. Uh, I might think you cannot index JSON data. So when you start having lots and lots of documents, if you are trying to query the JSON attributes, you will start having problems uh, about scaling. Your database will start consuming lots of data, lots of CPU. Sorry. That will be my guess. <laughs> I'm not an expert on Postgre and JSON. If anyone knows and want to to say something, welcome. Now it works pretty well in Postgre, and you can also query inside the JSON. They give you this possibility, but I don't know how the index is. I didn't think about that. <laughs> I know um, Microsoft SQL allows you to, to query JSON too. Uh, I don't know about the performance. Okay, any more questions? Uh, just one experience I had before. Like, um, I, we found, find out that DynamoDB in AWS was expensive to write and cheap to read. So we had to Prevent, not prevent, I had to hold to write to the database only it was like the end of the transaction because before you, you were writing uh, whenever uh, it, it was needed. But then after some uh, changes in the code, we were able to save 40% in costs, uh, just preventing to write anything in the DynamoDB. Awesome. You were using a multi-table design like having one entity per table? Oh, I don't know. Okay. But uh, uh, yeah, I don't know this, um, but we, we just um, holding the time that we, we were uh, writing to the database it would like uh, save a lot and client were happy. Awesome. If, if we go in depth in, in next uh, presentations, uh, there are two ways to design uh, 
tables in DynamoDB or in any NoSQL. And um, you could go with multi table and with single table. The truth is, hey, single table is the right way. Multi table is not suitable for uh, NoSQL. So when you start having multi tables, you will start spending more in writes because if you write an entity that's related with another and with another, we will have three writes for each save. Instead, if you have one table that is indexed in several ways and shares lots of entities with one write, you will just uh, update three or more entities. It depends on the design. Uh, it requires a change of mindset uh, to start designing simple single table design. It's not that easy. It has a it has a learning curve. Got it. Thanks. Okay. If there are no more questions or comments, we'll finish. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Jere. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Bye.